Oh. Welcome everyone, this is Kurt James Channel. Now we are back to our two episodes of two similar chapters and comparison. Featured by one, Lack of Legends versus the Mobile Legend by Rank. But before that, please like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell button so you will be notified to our new next episode. Let's do this! Order class fight is a mage with good damage and poke. However, he also has excellent push potential and crowd control. Let's take a look at his abilities. Gord's passive is Mystic Favor. This passive grants bonus damage to your fifth attack if you will land four consecutive ticks of ability and or auto attack damage on the same target. Due to the nature of Gord's kit, this is extremely easy to stack up and take advantage of. His first ability is Mystic Projectile. This is Gord's dreaded beach ball of doom. Cast this towards the target location where it will hit and then bounce forward a bit. When this ability impacts an enemy, heroes or minions, it will deal damage and apply a stun. This ability is unique in that the projectile has an arcing trajectory allowing you to toss it over minions in the lane or over an enemy tank and into the opposing team's back line. Not only can you set up kills with this, it can also be used to save your allies. Leveling up this ability decreases the cooldown while increasing the damage. It does not increase the stun duration. Next up is Mystic Injunction. It has a circular persistent AoE on the ground that does steady ticking damage. This is Gord's main source of wave for it. Injunction can do significant amounts of damage to an enemy hero, however they can easily walk out of it unless you combine it with Mystic Projectile. Leveling up this ability will increase the ticking damage while decreasing the cooldown. It does not increase the duration of the effect. Gord's ultimate ability is Mystic Gush. Channel a beam of mystic energy that does steady damage while slowing opponents. This obviously works well with his other abilities and constitutes his ultimate combo. Either place Injunction first or Stun first and then place Injunction and then fire away with Gush. You can move the beam using your directional pad, however Gord himself is rooted in place for the duration. You can cancel the channel by reactivating the ability if things start to go south. Leveling up this ability decreases the cooldown while increasing the damage but does not increase the duration. During the early laning phase of the game, you should be taking Gord to the mid lane. His wave clear and poke allow you to push out a wave, then rotate to assist your jungler or the other lanes. If the enemy team decides to send two people against you, your abilities provide you with enough safety and wave clear to hold your own 1v2, allowing the rest of your team to push in other areas. I usually unlock Mr. Projectile first as a safety measure against ganks, and then begin putting all of my levels into injunction in order to clear incoming waves as fast as possible. On a side note, if you do rotate to help your jungler once you know your tower is safe, be sure not to take the last hits on the jungle minions. Take care when using Injunction as you can't control the damage. Once you have your ultimate ability, it's time to turn up the heat. Be a bit more aggressive about pushing your lane out. If possible, use your combo to either bully the enemy mid laner out of lane or flat out kill them. Once you accomplish this, rotate to assist your ally. Travel through the bushes and time your projectile to either save your friends or set up kills. Don't neglect your lane though. Once your rotation is successful, or if it looks like you're not going to be able to accomplish anything, head back and clear up mid lane. Check the Lord or Turtle often and make sure the enemy doesn't try a cheeky early take. Go ahead and take out the enemy's mid lane tower if possible, but don't overextend yourself with the wave. Late game team fights are your time to shine. Gord can deal significant amounts of damage while maintaining a safe distance. The ability to stun enemies behind the opposing tank and then channeling your massive lightsaber means that you can get kills on the enemy's backline while still dealing high amounts of damage to the tank. While using your ultimate combo earlier in the game to secure a kill on one opponent is great, in the late game you should be looking for opportunities to rack up double kills or at least get a kill while dishing out damage to multiple targets. Your beam isn't very wide so people can split up to avoid both of them taking damage. Use Injunction to hurt several enemies into the beam. Let's first discuss battle spells. Battle spells should be chosen to either augment your strengths or negate your weaknesses. Gord's main weakness is a lack of escape. Beginning players should choose Sprint as a reliable option to get out when shit hits the fan. 
Later on, you'll gain access to Flicker, which is an even better option for escaping ganks. Purify can also save you when stunned, but I find Sprint and Flicker to be far more reliable. If you don't know how to change your equipment loadout, go to the Preparation tab and then click on Equipment. From there, choose Edit next to one of the default sets. This will allow you to change your loadout. Experiment around to find the set that works best for you. I'll give you the one I use for Gord, however, I strongly recommend you view other sets, as not everyone plays the same way. My first item is Rapid Boots. This gives me the ability to rotate quickly. Next up is Lightning Trunches, for some extra damage and wave boots. Ice Queen Wand for some spell vamp and the unique slowing effect. This will allow you to set up kills easier and turn Injunction into a soft escape. Divine Blade for the magical penetration. Clock of Destiny will make you more and more powerful as the game progresses. And finally, Holy Crystal for a boost of magic damage and extra burst. You should be using the Mage set for Gord, however I use the Magical set. I leveled this emblem set up first so that I could use it on multiple heroes, but I will be using the mage set when I can get it up to par with my magical set. As I've said, Gord lacks an organic escape. As such, he is susceptible to ganks from people that can get in your face. His ultimate roots him in place, making you a sitting duck for enemy skill shots. I find Z-Long in particular to be rough to deal with, as he can dash through your ultimate and then interrupt it while simultaneously putting you out of position. Gord's damage mainly comes about over time, leaving enemies with the opportunity to activate shielding or to heal up their teammates. Take all of this into consideration when planning your attack. Velkaz is a mage sent from the Void to learn about Runeterra and its native species. Armed with an array of lasers, Velkaz inflicts pain to probe for weaknesses which in turn, teach him to hurt his enemies more effectively. Velkaz is a powerful solo laner who operates best from the back line, firing off his abilities to keep his enemies at bay while he primes his devastating ultimate. Velkaz's passive is organic deconstruction. Each time he hits an enemy with an ability, he analyzes and marks them with deconstruction, highlighted here as a third of the triangle. Deconstruction expires after a few seconds, but Velkaz can maintain its duration with basic attacks. Deconstructing an enemy three times within a short window deals bonus true damage at skills level. Plasma Vision, Velkaz's Q, serves as his primary harass ability. Velkaz fires a long-range bolt of energy that splits at the end of its range, sending out two secondary bolts that travel perpendicular to the initial bolt's direction. Plasma Vision splits early when it hits an enemy or when reactivated in midair. Each of the three bolts slow and deal magic damage to a single target. One interesting point to make here is that Plasma Fission gains meaningful range when angled correctly. Here, Velkaz strikes a minion outside of the initial bolt's range and behind another minion. Because geometry. Velkaz can use Plasma Fission's range to safely harass his lane opponent even behind the minion wave. Void Rift is a long-range skill shot with two waves of damage. The first wave is applied as Velkaz tears the rift into the ground. After a brief delay, the rift explodes, doing the second wave of damage to all enemies still in the area. Both rounds of damage apply deconstruction, and while the second burn is stronger than the first, it can be easily avoided. Void Rift has no passive time, meaning Velkaz can cast it while moving and combine it with his other abilities to trigger his passive. Finally, although Void Rift has a lengthy cooldown, Velkaz can store two charges of the ability to use in quick succession. Use Void Rift immediately after your other ability to help ensure the second wave of damage hits. Tectonic Disruption sends out a shockwave that, after a brief delay, damages and knocks up enemies in an area. If Velkaz hits enemies at close range, they are knocked up and away from his position helping him create distance from approaching threats, including assassins, bruisers, and even Teemos. It's important to note that enemies are always knocked away from Velkaz's original cast position, even if he moves afterwards. Tectonic Disruption grants vision, so it can be used to scout through the wall. Tectonic Disruption's knockup allows Velkaz to easily line up his other abilities and burst down enemies. 